ألم أسمع بيوم الحشر يوم الجمع والدين ألم أسمع منادى الموت نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فيا عباد الله أصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله Respected brothers and sisters in Iman, we praise Allah Azza wa Jalla for all praise are for Him. He is our Creator. He created everything. Awjadana min al Adam. Allah brought us into existence from nothing. May peace and blessings of Allah descend upon all messengers. Min ladun Adam alayhi salam until the last of all messengers Muhammad ibn Abdullah alladhi ba'athahu Allahu rahmatan lil alameen a messenger the final messenger who was sent to complete the house of messengership or message and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him as a mercy to the world May Allah be pleased with Sahab, companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They played a role, a great role in receiving Islam, preserving Islam, and conveying Islam until Islam reached us in a silver platter. Radhi Allahu Anhum wa Radhu Anhum. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala praised them that he qualified them to be pleased with Allah and Allah was pleased with them. ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ خَشِيَ رَبَّهُ That is a gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants to whoever is mindful of his commandments, whoever is conscious of Allah, whoever fears his love. May Allah forgive us our sins, may Allah connect our hearts, may Allah azza wa jalla guide us to the straight path. إِلَىٰ أَنْ نَلْقَى مُحَمَّدٍ until when we will meet with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I advise you, starting by myself, that together we should be conscious of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be mindful of the obligations enjoined on us by Allah, our Creator. We should fear Allah. Ittaqullaha haqqa taqwa. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi sirri wal alam. Fear your Lord secretly and openly. There on one of our khutbah, we want to start, we want to continue from where we stopped. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, fi ard al-mahshar, when al-awwaluna wal-akhirun min al-khalai, when the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, human beings, angels, demons, animals all creation of allah will be gathered to stand in the court of allah in the court this is the supremest court so we are standing 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on that day, يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ وَأَنَّ لَهُ الذِّكْرَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on that day that a human being, an individual, people will remember that day they will remember. They are remembering or remembrance will be activated. Because Allah, sorry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already informed you that yunabba'u al-insanu yawma idhim bima qaddama wa akhar that this insan, this human being, you and me we shall be informed on the day of judgment in the life to come we shall be informed of everything that we did we sent forward when we were living here and everything that we left behind you will be informed small and big it will be brought in an open so Allah says yawma yatadhakkaru al-insanu at that moment you will remember wa anna lahu dhikra lakin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and what will your remembrance or remembering help you at that moment if you did not want to remember in this world how is your remembrance and remembering going to help you at that moment what is this that he is remembering I want to bring you back to the dunya I want to bring you back to this world. We are living here. On that day, you're going to try to remember. The memory is going to be alive and live. Like in Allah says that if you did not take heed in this world, if you did not remember, if you did not receive the message from Allah, how is your remembering going to help you? An example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they were reminded of the most important thing in their life. وَإِذَا قِيلَ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Whenever they were reminded to accept لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ To accept Allah, to accept their Creator, to believe in Him, to follow His commandments, to abstain from everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. مِنَ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ وَالْمَنْهِيَاتِ Whenever they were told, receive لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Did they receive it? Yes, takbirun. They arrogantly refuse to receive it. How is their remembering or remembrance going to help them on the day of death? They receive to believe in Allah, their creator in this world. How is their belief there going to help them? Whenever they were told, can you prostrate? Can you humble yourself? and bow down in prostration to your creator, worship him. They dis dis disputed and rejected. They said, who is that Ar-Rahman? Arrogance, arrogance and ego, ego. Perform your fajr. Mm. Perform your dhuhr. Why should I perform dhuhr? I have to make money. Can you spend three minutes to perform your salah? Make wudu for some two, three minutes and then bow down, even in your office. Salat so al-Dhuhr, five minutes or so, Allahu Akbar. You know, how many rakah? He said, you know, customers are, are, are more, far better, more beneficial than those four rakah of Dhuhr. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ مُرْكَعُ Whenever they were told, bow down, be in ruku. لَا يَرْكَعُونَ They said, we are not going to, why should I bow? Okay, Allah says that, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ They were reminded. They were reminded in this world that look, whatever you have, all is not yours. Share. Share a portion of what you have with the poor and needy and disadvantaged. Share. I'm giving you. Share a portion. Don't give all. Allah told them that I am going to provide you. Allah says I'm going to provide you. Then take a portion from what I have given you. They saw that told Allah no. Why should I help the poor? Why should I help your deen? Why? Doing other things of dunya was a priority for them than advancing the deen of Allah and following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the wealth that Allah gave them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ يَبْخَلُونَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ يَعْنِ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ Do not think that those who are stingy, 
Those who don't want to share, they don't want to give, they don't want to help orphans and widows, they don't want to help masakin poor, they don't want to help abna usabin, they don't want to help buyutullah, they don't want to use their wealth to please Allah, to do what the world should do better, do not think that that is good for them. But huwa sharrul lahum, Allah said that it is evil, it is very bad for them. Sayyutawwakuna, Ma bakhilu bihi yawm al qiyamah. They will be burning in Jahannam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make those words that they kept, that they hold, that they put. In fact, they died even with and without enjoying. They kept them, they kept them, and they were stingy, and they didn't want to give to help others who needed it. You leave it in the bank, then your family, people who did not even fight for it, people who did not, these are the people who are going to enjoy it. Allah said that this is going to be a means of punishment for you in Jahannam on the day of Tiyama, in hellfire. Can you save yourself by giving even a portion of a piece of debt? So, That is the day when you will remember all this. The health that Allah gave you. The wealth that Allah gave you. The peace that Allah gave you. You breathed in and out carbon dioxide and oxygen. You ate and food was processed and distributed. Whatever remained, remained and whatever exited, exited. But you did not use that to strengthen your relationship with Allah. You did not use your wealth, your health to worship your creator. Now comes a point when he see that his dunya, worldly account was full, but his account with Allah was zero. It reads zero, negative. Ya pulu ya laytani qaddamtu li hayat. Ya pulu ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. This is when you will say, this is when I will say, may Allah protect us from not saying that. May Allah protect us from yani saying that. We should not say that. We should not set ourselves for regret on the day of Qiyamah. This person who wasted his time in this world, wasted his life in this world, invested a lot in non-beneficial things in this world, he will say, Ya Laytani, woe unto me. He will say in regret that I wish I had invested, I had sent something in my account with my creator that will help me in that life to come. Yaqulu ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. You have a chance when you are listening to this ayah to start investing with Allah now. Now as you are sitting here. You have an opportunity because you are still living. You do not know when angel of death is going to come to you to remove you from the surface of the earth. Do not set yourself for regret. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing two scenarios, two groups of people. And he says, Fi surat al-an'am, surat al-an'am, Surah Al-A'raf, let us start with Surah Al-A'raf, ayah number 51. You say, الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا دِينَهُمْ لَهْوًا وَلَعِبًا وَغَرَّتُهُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فَالْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاهُمْ كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَاءَ يَوْمِهِمْ هَذَا وَمَا كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَجْحَدُونَ Ayah is addressing Kufar, but any Muslim who falls in that category is also addressed with this ayah. The question is, how did we receive our religion, our deen, our way of life? How, commit, how committed are we to our religion? How are we following our religion? Do we reduce it only in salah and we think that we have entered Jannah or we go beyond salah? How much are we strengthening our relationship with Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said there are people they took their religion for a play and mockery. They took their religion for granted. Yes, 
I took it that it's something there. I'm a Muslim because my fathers were Muslims. I'm a Muslim, but I'm not, I'm not a committed Muslim. I have, I have seen Muslims, I have seen them, and I have heard them saying, Oh, my sister is so religious, mashallah, but not me. Make dua for me, not me. But my sister, I have a sister, mashallah. Shame on you. Yani you are saying that your sister, mashallah, but not you. Yani you have made a decision, a deliberate, yani, in take any deliberate step and a decision of not worshiping Allah. And you say, my sister, how is that going to help you with your creator on the day of death? How is your sister's religiosity going to help you on the day of death? Take a religion for mockery. الذين اتخذوا دينهم لهوا ولعبا وغرتهم الحياة الدنيا You know why? Because they were preoccupied and occupied. They were deceived with the life of this world. All that they had, and I mentioned that in every khutbah, was American dream and not Allah's dream, not Jannah's dream. They reduced their thinking and intelligence to, to the world. They never went beyond this world. What a pathetic situation. So they allowed this world to occupy them. All that he talks about is how he's connected to the world and how he wants to achieve this. Less does he talk about his connection with Allah. You can sit with him for three hours, drinking chai and coffee and juice. Wallahi, he will never mention Allah in that gathering. But he tells you in China, oh, there are good products. And then, and then, and then he talks to you about once I make money, even his retirement plan is fake. Once I make money, is then I want to relax somewhere in Yugoslavia. Then I will be enjoying my money. No, inshallah, included in that. He doesn't even say, if God wills. <laughs> so this is what is going to happen to a person like that on the day of Qiyah. Allah says that today we will neglect them. Your wealth is not there. Your wife is not there. Your children are not there. Your cars are not there. You died so many years ago, buried, buried without clothing, without cars. Now you are resurrected. You are in the court of Allah. Yeah, you're standing in the court of Allah. Hadith of Adi ibn Hatim explains this clearly. Where is your bank account in the world? Where is everything that you possess in this world? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ma minkum min ahadi illa sayukallimuhu rabbuhu laysa baynahu wa baynahu tarjuma au laysa baynahu wa bayna Allah tarjuma There is none of you except that Allah, your creator who created you will address you directly without any interpreter and then fayanduru aymana minhu he will look on his right fala yara illa ma qaddama he will not find except what he did in this world. And he will look on his left side and he will not find except what he's, he did. And he will look in front of him. You will not see except hellfire in front of you. Good and bad deeds surrounding you at that moment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, فَالْيَوْمَ نَسَاهُمْ كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَاءَ يَوْمِهِمْ هَذَا Today we are neglecting them, we are not attending to them, there is no mercy on them, because they did not want to have that mercy in the world, we gave it to them for free, we poured it on them, we told them here are the ways of mercy, take it. They said, no, we don't want that mercy. Allah says that that is how you treated my mercy, that is how you treated my religion, that is how you treated faith, that is how you're going to be treated today. They have to be treated like that because of how, what they neglected of my ayat, my signs, my verses, my proofs, my evidences, my miracles, Quran and Sunnah, they rejected it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not attend to them with mercy on the day of prayer. الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا دِينَهُمْ لَهْوًا وَلَعِبًا We have to be very careful Muslims. We have to be very careful. Very careful. You have to be very careful. I'm warning you by the warning of Allah. 
You have to be very careful on how you receive your deen, your religion, your way of life. You have to be very careful on your relationship with Allah. You have to be very, very careful on how you live in this world. Coming to some conclusions, Ahbab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us another scenario. Fi surat al-An'am, ayah number 31. That was A'raf 51, this is An'am 31. You go home, inshallah, open Quran, quote the dust, remove the dust, and at least say which ayah was that. There is more into it. This is a portion of ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِلِقَاءِ اللَّهِ بِلِقَاءِ اللَّهِ the losers are those who have rejected a meeting with Allah. Some of them did not say that I don't want to meet with Allah, but their action. They did not prepare for that journey. Every journey needs a preparation. Yes or no? Yes. You want to travel just from here to the airport? You need a preparation. Yes, here. Here to now. You want to get out of America, preparation, ticket, what, and that, and that, transit, you know, one stop, two stops. Where is my destination? I'm going to, be, you are going to Mecca to the house of Allah. You still book the hotel, and this is where am I going to eat? Every journey needs a preparation. Why do you think that the greatest journey of meeting with Allah does not require preparation? What preparation have you made? Because there is preparation. They are losers. They have lost. It is called losing before arrival. Ah. You're a loser. If you have rejected and did not prepare to meet with Allah with your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these people, Allah. And the life of this world has also deceived them. You know what will, 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 will happen to these people. Until when Qiyamah comes to them suddenly, when the hour comes, when Allah has decided that this is the time to finish this world because I want to transfer them to another world. Until when that time comes, then they start saying, Ya Hasratana ala ma farratna fiha. They will say, Oh, they start regretting. They start regretting how they lost. They start regretting seeing that they, there is nothing in their account with their Creator. They start regretting on how much time they had and they did not spend it appropriately. Ya hasratana ala ma farratana fiha. They start regretting. Fa'anna lahumu dhikra. How is your regret going to help you at that moment? We celebrate our life in this world. You know, I'm 50 years old and I'm 20 years old and I'm this years old. What did you do with your daytime 24 7 a week? What did you do with. Did you even sit down to think the reason of your existence? Did you? For a minute. Did you ever say that once a week, I want to take some account, I want to evaluate myself, I want to evaluate my eyes, I want to evaluate my mouth and tongue, I want to evaluate my ears, I want to evaluate. Today I want to sit down just to remember and reflect on the blessings of Allah upon me. How is this journey going to be? When I stand in front of Allah because Allah has informed me in advance that you're going to come and I will meet with you. Why are you regretting? How is your regret going to help you? Allah says, Allah says, They are talking like that. And they appear in the court of Allah with a lot of files, a lot of baggages and luggages of their evil deeds on your back like this. Allah sa ama yazirun. Undisputedly, whatever they carry on their back is the worst, is the worst that they can carry 
the worst that can accompany them to the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyam. You carry all these luggages and burden, but there is nothing that is going to help you to succeed on the day of Qiyam. I want to wrap this khutbah with the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha to give some. Hadith is muttafaqun ali. But hadith of Aisha is in Sahih Muslim. In Sahih Muslim. An Aisha ta, an Aisha ta radiallahu anha qalat. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha, Ummu al-Mu'mineen, our mother, as believers, a first lady, you know, one of the first ladies, she says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the following, Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa'ahu, wa man kariha liqa Allah, kariha Allahu liqa'ahu. That whoever loves meeting with Allah, whoever prepares himself with love, whoever put effort to worship Allah in this world, whoever fulfills his duties and roles and obligations, whoever fulfills the rights of the Creator upon him or her in this world, preparing to meet with Allah, that he loves meeting with Allah in a good condition, automatically Allah loves meeting with you, if you are in that condition. وَمَنْ كَرِهَ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَهُ But whoever hates meeting with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also hates meeting with you. Aisha radiallahu anha said, فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَكَرَاهِيَةُ الْمَوْتِ فَكُلُّنَا نَكْرَهُ الْمَوْتِ What do you mean by loving meeting with Allah or hating meeting with Allah? Do you refer to maybe somebody hating to die? Like I want to die now to meet with Allah. Then all human beings have this nature of if they are told to die now, they would say, can you give me a day, right? Can you give me one week to talk to my family? Can I put my finances in, you know? Everybody hates just dying like this, Ya Rasulullah. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Laysa kadalik. That is not what I mean. Walakinna al-mu'mina idha bushira bi rahmatillahi وَرِضُوَانِهِ وَجَنَّتِي أَحَبَّ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ فَأَحَبَّ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَ Oh Aisha, I'm not talking about this small business here. I'm describing a believer, a believer's preparation to meeting with Allah. For when this believer is informed, is given good news, is given glad tidings of the mercy of Allah, that Allah is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ When he or she is given a good news of the mercy of Allah and his paradise and his pleasure أَحَبَّ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ Automatically, he loves meeting with Allah and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves meeting with him. وَأَمَّا الْكَافِرُ As for a disbeliever, a rejecter of faith, a mushrik. إِذَا بُشِّرَ بِعَذَابِ اللَّهِ وَسَخَطِهِ When he or she is given news of the punishment of Allah and the anger of Allah because he or she refused to believe in Allah. He refused to fight Allah. Yani he encouraged fighting Allah. He refused to worship Allah. He did not believe in Allah. He did not worship Allah. He was not mindful of the way of life called a deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us as a mercy. What does he deserve? When he is told that if you follow that wrong path, you are going to end to be in punishment of Allah and his displeasure. Kari haliqa Allah. Because his investment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is zero. Automatically, yani he hates meeting with Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates meeting with him. My respected brothers, we talk about salvation and I'm leaving you in this ayah without elaborating on it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you the following, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسِ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ You talk about salvation, you talk about real success. Yes, we have some small successes in this world. Like in real and great successes, when this is going to happen? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved you from Jahannam. On the day of Qiyam, he saves you from burning in hell. Wa udkhil al-jannah, 
and that out of his mercy he admits you in paradise faqad faz that is a person who has attained salvation this is a person who has indeed succeeded with great success and then allah say wama alhayatu dunya illa mata'ul ghurur and the life of this dunya that some of us fix their eyes and minds yani too much into forgetting the great life that is coming of akhirah allah say that it is just a temporary enjoyment ma indakum yanfadhu wa ma indallahi baq everything you have will perish that all that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has will remain aqulu ma tasma'un astaghfirullah وسلم على محمد في الاخرين وصلي وسلم على محمد في كل وقت وحين عباد الله ان الله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم ارض عن جميع صحابه رسول الله ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ات نفوسنا تقواها زكها انت خير من زكاها انك انت وليها ومولاها اللهم ارزق بنا فيما جرت به المقادير وهون علينا كل عسير انك على كل شيء قدير يا الله دوز والسيك ودم يا الله دوز وبداي يا الله حب رحمه ودم those who are having hardships and difficulties make it easy for them ya allah ya allah grant us hasanat in the dunya grant us hasanat in the grave grant us hasanat in the day of qiyamah ya allah save us from hell fire admit us in jannah ya allah allahumma rahmataka narju fala takilna ila anfusina tarfat ayn wa aslih lana umurana kullaha la ilaha illa ant لا اله الا الله العظيم الحليم لا اله الا الله رب العرش العظيم لا اله الا الله رب السماوات ورب الارض رب العرش الكريم برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين الحمد لله رب العالمين بليز كونتينيو هيلبينج ذا مسجد وي هاف مدرسه اون وي هاف يوت بروجرامز هير وي ار بريبيرينج تو كونتينيو ويز اور دعوه ان داون تاون وي نيد قران لوك ات ذا شيلفز وي نيد قران ان فاكت وي ار استابليشينج لايبرري اف يو هاف انجلش بوكس ايفن ات هوم دونيت ذيم but do not put them in the shelf put them here i will go through them and then i will see which one we should be putting here if you can buy as volumes of ibn kathir 10 volumes it's not very expensive less than 200 dollars go on online and buy it to us don't give us money shall do some work you go online you buy ibn kathir we need quran translation of quran we need masahif because we want to have one of the biggest library in in, in colorado inshallah you have to do something inshallah do contribution and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you in dunya and akhirah wa after this one Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Hayya ala as-salati Hayya ala al-falah Qad iqamat as-salah Qad iqamat as-salah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah او طيب السلوك فكم تراسو الله اكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قالوا اذا ضللنا في الارض ان لا في خلق جديد بل هم بلقاء ربهم كافرون 
قل يتوفاكم ملك الموت الذي وكل بكم ثم إلى ربكم ترجعون ولو ترى إذ المجرمون ناكسوا رؤوسهم عند ربهم ربنا أبصرنا وسمعنا فرجعنا نعمل صالحا فرجعنا نعمل صالحا إنا موقنون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سلام قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم أن لا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن اعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 
الموت يدعوني يناديني فيا رباه 